Well, it's lovely to have Claire Potter along with us today on our Facebook and our Twitter pages. So thank you very much, Claire, for agreeing to chat with us um, about your career and your work as an author and a poet. And it's even better that you're local as well to Gartholog, which is fantastic. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself first for us? Yeah, so I'm Claire E. Potter and primarily I'm a poet, but I've done quite a few other things as well. I've directed a documentary. I, I collaborate with other artists. I, I particularly like working with musicians. I've done quite a few um, a few pieces with jazz musicians and I do a lot of workshops in a community and in with various arts organizations so I'm very busy doing different things and I like having quite a diverse um, body of work and creative activities to be to be thinking on. Fantastic and um, so how have you been keeping yourself busy during um, well the <laughs> The few lockdowns that we've been going through at the moment. Yeah, it's been, I think, like a lot of people, um, I, I'm processing, I think we won't process it and come to understand it really well until we're in reflection a few years onwards. But initially, as a poet, I thought I had to write about it all. And I wrote some pretty bad poems. <laughs> um, and then I went into a slump. And then, of course, I've got two children. Um, one is 10 and one is and one is 14. So they're at home working. So the day is is not organised. It's often they've got work and sometimes they need help. And we're trying to get out just like everybody else. It's the same for everybody. We're, we're still finding our way through. But I've, I've come to a point. I've worked through the lows of it and I'm actually enjoying enjoying it. Um, and getting out into it, where we live here in Garth uh, in Gartholog, uh, in Church Village, you know, there's some nice wooded areas. So I've been enjoying that. Oh, fantastic. Um, and what would you say um, inspires you or what inspired you to start writing? Oh, uh, to start writing, um, I came from um, Kevin Forest, small mining town, not far from Blackwood. And a lot of my family really liked poetry they didn't write poetry at that time but they told lots of stories and lots of people in the village were storytellers and um I grew up with a grandmother who used to tell me she used to call them little ditties and um so I liked sound and so for me it was always sound driven but also enchantment I think when you I, I'm I deeply loved nature as a child I think because my dad used to walk me a lot by rivers and and, and so forth. And so I think for me, it's when I find something that's inspiring, makes me feel um, deeply about something. And, and that's what I wanted to capture as a child is that kind of, and there's a sense of with poetry, I think, why I turned to poetry, there's a safety in rhythm and not a predictability, but there's something that's ordered. And perhaps I wasn't very ordered as a child. And that kind of made me feel secure, poetry. That's interesting. So do you still love the outdoors as much as you did as a child? Yes. Um, and I'm very fortunate to have had commissions that put poetry residencies that mean I have to do it. Because like many people, I know what's good for me, but I don't always do it. It's a very strange thing. I don't know why I don't get up every day and think, wow, I've got the freedom to go for a walk and I don't do it. Um, and sometimes if I'm feeling low and I know I should go out, I don't do it. But when I do, I'm like, of course, that here we are. Here I am next to a beech tree that is, you know, 80, 100 years old, and I'm feeling something, and I could talk for hours about trees, or the river rushing through, and then I'm realizing about, we're all in this kind of sense of flow and process, and we have to let go. And, you know we've got some sunshine today spring is coming revival so even though there's lots of things in the news that can be difficult there's a sense that nature always reminds us and I have to go remember to go to to do it but I have to kind of force myself which sounds silly but I do yeah it's difficult isn't it because like you say time constraints and family and working from home and um, homeschooling and it is difficult isn't it but like you say after you've sort of made the effort and you feel oh you know you feel better and fresh air. Um, and I think, you know, during lockdown, we've all um, sort of gone back to basics, really, because we we're not able to go away. We're not able to travel. And um, so we have explored our local area and, and learned to perhaps appreciate it more, because I think sometimes we've not um, 
perhaps appreciated it because it's always been there but going for a walk from home and discovering what we've got locally I think like you say is has been has been really important and mm. um, so have you always wanted to be an author and a poet when you were younger in school what did you aspire to be um I, I, it wasn't um conscious I just did it so I never thought I would go and be a poet because I was always saying poetry before I could write it because I was surrounded by that and then I was always writing it when I was in school um, as a side thing. And but the things I played as a child were, you know, being a teacher, I'd have my dolls and writing poems. And and it, the feeling of that, it was intense, that feeling. And I, I get it now, which means I'm in the right position, is that when you're writing a poem and you capture that sense or you're sometimes you're not in charge of the poem sometimes the poem teaches you something that those moments are rare and glorious and so for me it, you know it was never a choice I was just doing it but of course I came from a relatively poor background so my parents were always quite you know make sure you work hard in school get a good job so poet was never because you don't make very much money as a poet um but so I, I was quite academic went to university did a master's degree etc but it pulled me back and in my times in my life when I felt lost or depressed or you know stressed um always it's there to kind of pull me through and to make sense it's that going back to that order that safety but not just safety it's not all oh, it's challenging writing and putting your work out there it's scary but but that there's a sense of um I get equilibrium when writing and then in the end I was like I, I was teaching at Cardiff Uni which I loved I thought I have to leave I have to be free to be able to take commissions and do workshops and write when I want and explore and it's the best thing so it was a calling really rather than when I grow up I want to be a poet you know it was just I eventually got back to the thing that had always been with me sorry that was a long-winded answer no, 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 fine. so what do you um what aspect of your um your job now do you enjoy most you were saying you you did um you've done a bit of teaching and um, but that you love the commissions is that where your sort of heart really sort of lies and you really love that type of work it, it, oh, it's just I feel so blessed because it's all it's all wonderful I mean if I'm doing a workshop and then somebody it could be a child or it could be an adult perhaps has never written a poem before and they come to the workshop with a with a kind of courage to, to to have a go and then they'll write something that's so eloquent or insightful or beautiful and then I get to share that and to hear that and be present for that so that's really meaningful to me and also when I recently wrote a poem that kind of taught me something about myself and that, that made me humble made me realize I'm not as in control you know is that I've still got so much to learn and these various commissions I get I'm always starting at scratch because I might be working with a group of people I've never worked with before in a particular health sector for instance or um and so on and so I have to learn the language of that group if you know what I mean if you know if you're working with you know I work with people in the Buthin in the hospice and um it's not you're not doing just workshops it, the same sort of thing you have to really consider the people you're working for um and and so the content of the workshop isn't it yeah, yeah exactly yeah um so you mentioned that you know you remember when you were younger your grandparents and telling stories and that type of thing so do you um do you come from a literary background then with, with regards to your family and well literary in the sense that my mother particularly was an avid reader um my grandmother never read anything but she told stories and she sang hymns and ditties and things like that so there was as I'm saying there was this kind of sense of sound and I would get intoxicated with it um but what's been really interesting is so although nobody was writing it was always in the house and books and I was always read to and then I, I loved reading myself as a child um, is that now my father uh, has begun a couple of years ago he's a retired firefighter and he started writing poetry and he's really a good poet and some of his pieces floor me and we were on the um the, the BBC4 listening project talking about that how he came to that but to me he always had that and in his speaking and my mother too she she writes really well and so that in their speaking although they weren't writing when I was a child there was that kind of understanding innately of what poetry means it's, it's more than words it's a sense of of understanding oneself and the world I think 
Oh, that's interesting that your um your dad has started to write later on, um and um sort of I suppose like you say he always had that um mm-hmm. talent because of the you know experiences and the books that he'd read um in his life as well. And so how would you describe your writing space? I can see in the background, is that the room that you tend to um, write in? Yeah, um, at the moment, it's a bit of a mess because we're, we've had a bit of a leak in the attic. So there's all boxes in here. But gen- I mean, it's a little bit, I love, I live in a barracks house, modern house, but uh, my study is a 1930s, you know, um, I love that period. Um, but sometimes it feels a bit too much like a film set. <laughs> So I go, we've got a van, a camper van, so I'll go up to the common in Ponty or I'll go to Abergavenny when we could, um, park somewhere and walk and write. Um, usually my best writing, my ideas come when I'm in motion. Um, and so I love this space. I adore this space. It's a good space for reading and getting lost in imagination. But generally my writing takes place out and when I'm moving. That's interesting, isn't it, that, you know, you talk about the love of the outdoors and when you were younger and how you still um, feel that you feel revived after you've been out for a walk, that, you know, that's obviously um, really important to you when you're writing. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, being outdoors, it, it, um, there's nothing better, really, people say, for the soul, is there? Mm-hmm. And singing, too. I, I love, I'm not a very good singer, but I love singing. And I'm supposedly related to Joseph Parry in some convoluted way. And so, you know... Um, one of the ways I decorated my radiator here was my nan's old hymn book. So, gosh, I hope it's not a bad thing that I cut up her hymn books. But um, so, you know, we used to sit on a Sunday and sing along to songs of praises. And I've worked a lot with musicians. So for me, that's an act of being in motion is making because to me, poetry better than being read is to be heard or to be voiced. And I think I just love playing with singing. And when I'm singing, I kind of freeze me up from my, I guess, fear. And so I'm a bit more open um, to what's coming in and to, to writing. So music is a big, big, big part of it. And, and you, you know, you've talked about some of the commissions that you've done. Um, so with the work that you've done with them, um, musicians, how have they sort of come about and how have you um, sort of started um, and, and what's the process if you mm. work with a musician as a poet? So I lived in New Orleans uh, in Louisiana for 10 years and I left just before Hurricane Katrina. And when I came back, I I was quite obviously naturally devastated. And I tried to write a piece about it for the Wales Arts Review. And the piece became about how I couldn't write about it because it was so traumatic. And a um, a, a jazz uh, uh, musician, Gareth Roberts, contacted me and he was interested in in New Orleans and the piece I'd written. And then we applied for funding with the Arts Council who gave us some R&D research and development money. And we co-created. So sometimes I'd write a piece and he'd make music and then the other way around. And sometimes we got together and we had this 45 minute suite um, of this kind of journey of what it was like. And I, I learned that some of the emotion I was allowed to feel through the music and didn't have to articulate. So I learned a big lesson that you don't have to say everything and capture everything. Sometimes silence is best. And I, I should take that advice sometimes. And then I also, I went to the Smithsonian some years ago to perform with a huge Welsh contingent of artists, musicians and um, craftspeople. And there were a few musicians there, Thomas Williams from Birim and, um, Dave Jones, a pianist. And so we've since um, d- worked together and um, we did something for our ad uh, for schools. So it's, it's just a kind of coming together and it works differently. Like I was saying with workshops, I've worked with many different types of musicians and, uh, and artists. It's about the relationship and negotiation because you have to compromise. Plus you learn a lot more. So it's, it's as I'm saying, it's kind of like negotiating each time it's something different. And I suppose that's what's the beauty of it, really, the variety. So no no commission is the same because obviously every artist has their own unique quirks and their style yeah. and their favourite genres. So obviously yeah. then you you sort of run with it. And like you say, the, the sense of compromise, which is interesting. Um, so what would you say is you've talked about, um, you know, writing poems that have been difficult or because of the emotion behind them. What would you say is the most difficult part of writing for you? Um. It's not the act of writing. I don't, 
I'm not a poet who'll say, right, I, I need to sit now. It's my writing time and write. I, I, I go with the feeling or something I've heard, like my daughter or son will say something and I'll go, oh, or we're out walking and I think, wow, or there's something nagging at me that I want to work out. So to me, that's pleasure, that part. And it feels like being on fire, like you totally connect. It sounds a bit zen, but you feel connected. I do at least with the universe, with everything. That's the not easy part, but that's the oh beautiful part. Then the part I find most difficult is after having such an intense experience is then when you send it out and perhaps it's not ready or um, it doesn't get accepted for publication. And that's really difficult. And I think I find it difficult um, motivating myself. Um, and as I, because as I say, don't come every day and write. And so I need to have commissions often because I'm not disciplined enough to say, right, this is my reading time. This is my writing time. I wish I had more discipline. I'd probably be, I'd have much, much more publications and be a much better writer. And then it's time, isn't it, as well? So, you know, you've got a family and you, it's difficult to balance it, isn't it? So, um, so what would you, um, do you show your work in progress to anybody? So that kind of the starter, the ideas, and um, before they, possibly developed into a poem does, does anybody get no to no no no, no. I, I don't I don't even get that because I'm not I'm not consciously thinking oh I want to write a poem about those goldfinches I see the goldfinches then they don't come and I'm having a feeling where are the goldfinches and I write the poem I kind of write in the white heat um but I do I have a group of friends I share work with and of late particularly in lockdown I've been willing to say oh whatever I'm going to share something on Facebook that I've just written and I might stutter when I'm doing it. I think it doesn't matter right now we are all imperfect <laughs> we're all struggling and I made a video for a short film for um, I'm Thinking of You, Cymru. And I didn't know what kind of film am I going to make uh, to help people feel better. And in the end, I made a film about how difficult it was to make the film. And, the, you know, I'm dropping the camera and, um, and my little girl say, no, what you want to do is this. And I thought, great. So what, that's something that's been really good is that I, I'm less precious because I'm not a brilliant poet and I'm not, you know, lauded for being superb crafter of, of things I'm thinking well why not embrace more the kind of the bumps and the everyday and share that that's more my truth I suppose yeah and I suppose in a way especially with lockdown and things we can be too hard on ourselves and, and want things to be perfect and at the moment you have to just take life as it is and Absolutely. you have to be kind to yourself and you have to make sure that you know you are appreciating the small things and, and you know getting through each day um, you know and just kind of thinking I'm still here I'm still going exactly. yeah the kids are fed <laughs> um, so what, as a child then <clears throat> did you have a favorite author or a favorite poet or a favorite poem that really st stands out for you I I was mad for nursery rhymes and my mother has, has the most beautiful voice and she would you know in the you know the ugly duckling and she would just constantly and if we were in the car um, we would be singing songs and um, I did read the faraway tree over and over again but what I really loved which is odd for a little girl is I used to take my Walkman you'll have to look up there anybody under the age of 30 a Sony Walkman and I put it on so my mother and father couldn't hear and I'd listen to BBC radio plays <laughs> um, so I think I'm kind of wa waving my way towards radio but I so I love listening to stories um, and dramas play out in my ear rather than reading so much but for me it was it so again it comes back to sound so did you um enjoy that you, you know you said that your um your grandmother would sort of say these little ditties and these little stories would you kind of um sort of go to copy and and story tell in, in the same sort of way I think I infused it like with my gran you know she we'd have the fire the telly'd be off because she said that what was it? No, the pipes had to cool down. The valves had to cool down. <laughs> um, we would just sit by the fire and she would just poke the fire and then she'd suddenly go, a wise old owl lived in an oak with a moor he saw, you know, and she'd start these. And they felt like spells, truly. And that was, it, it was um, ritual. And I felt, it felt really special. And perhaps it wasn't even so much the words, but the way that she would tell. And my mother also with um, the Hoya uh, Oh, um, the, the nursery rhymes. Right, and yeah. so I think uh, one thing I can say is I am good at performing or presenting my poetry. And I think 
that it's because of that you know is bringing yeah, that that's sense. skill in itself isn't it you know because a poet can be fantastic at writing um but if they're not able to sort of connect with the audience in a way that um they can you know relate to them and they can um which is which is really really important um so if you could describe your perfect book hero or heroine what um would they look like oh um you mean for me to write or yeah. something i um yeah, to write you know i i'm percolating towards that and it would be something along the lines of a memoir although i i'm a poet I really adore reading memoir, really good memoir. And um, for instance, um, I love Terry Tempest Williams's um, When Women Were Birds. And um, when her mother died, she'd left her all her journals to teach her how to kind of be a woman. Uh, and um, they were all blank. So she had to piece together. And I'm really interested. Uh, my perfect book would be a memoir where I'm figuring stuff out that's held me back big style and all the stuff that's enchanted me and I've been blessed to, or privileged, not blessed, I've been privileged to kind of experience in all this time and meeting people and writing poetry with others and making art. I'd like to kind of hold that to the light so that other people can read that in the way I read memoir and go, oh yeah, I belong. You know, I belong to that world of creativity and understanding and my voice matters, even though it might not fit in there or there or there, it really matters. And, and would you say sort of, you know, you talked a little bit about um, how you start to write a poem and then sometimes it becomes difficult. Um, how would you say um, your um, poems develop? So if you guide us through the stage of a poem... Well, they're very different, Jane, because sometimes, uh, you know, I get commissioned, like I, I was commissioned to write something for the new, um, for the streets, and uh, no, that was lots of different poetry, for um, in Keir Hardy, for instance, the, in Merthyr, the hospital there. And so because I was writing to commission, I listened to lots of people in the town and talked to various people, collected things, and then I'm putting together a puzzle. So that's a different part of the brain. Whereas if I'm going for a walk today with my daughter and something catches in me and I go, ah, oh, I've got to write that. I'm just kind of, I just kind of go with the instinct of it. I think sometimes the poem is already somewhere and it wants to work its way out. Um, but then of course there are poems. I started one the other day and I thought it was going to be a really great poem and I just cannot get the end. So it might be that I'm just going to let that one go and let that compost into something else for another piece. So would you say, you, you know, that with the commissions, would you say the research is um, absolutely key, really, to the, the background of the poetry and the project and, and, and how it sort of develops? Yeah. yeah, I've got a commission coming in now and um, he, he only wants a few lines. But I'm going to have to go walk in those forests. I'm going to read up on the industrial history of around the Ababagod area and Kumdaran uh, and all that. Um, because for me, I want to really take every kind of particle and see what's in there that might be. I like to feel surprised. I could easily write this poem because I'm from that area. I could make. But if I want it to ring true, then I have to get my feet in the mud and I have to go back to the source, which is I was um, poet in residence for Wales Arts Review and I did lots of pieces on the river and the Rumney and the Sahawi. I grew up between the two and looking for the source of the river. And that's what I'm doing in those poems is trying to find what's the nub there that it, it, it enchants me because I'm not going to write a good poem if I'm not enchanted, feeling enchanted, I mean. So would you say then... Um for your poems and your poetry and the way you work, emotion is at the heart of, of, of what you write and that it has to be true. Yeah. I'm probably too much. I'm probably too caught up in that. A lot of the poets I really love um, have that emotion. Perhaps they feel that burn, but then they are kind of able to step back and be more kind of objectively, objectively craft it. Whereas I'm, I'm full, you know, I'm like the guy in the pottery throw down who cries, at, you know, when he's judging. I'm like, when I'm writing poetry, I'm, I get a bit consumed with the feeling of it. But if I'm enjoying that, um, I don't know. And I think when I do readings, people say they like that. So, But I think that's the talent in itself, isn't it? You know, to become, 
to be able to get lost in it so much that your emotion is tied up in it. And, you know, there's something really lovely about that, I think, isn't there? That, you know, quite a few poets perhaps wouldn't be able to feel that connected to it. Um, so, yeah, I think there's something quite lovely about that, really. Although I put together a pamphlet in the first lockdown and I sent it. I mean, they did get shortlisted in one competition but then I sent it to a publisher who I wanted to publish me and and now looking back I'm like oh god it was really it wasn't you know wasn't my best work and I was too caught up in the emotion and Nigel Jenkins the poet from Swansea you know he said something about in one of his poems you know avoid avoid when there's an, a, a tanker disaster avoid um avoid walking into the oil slick and I, I think I have a little bit of a tendency to do that so that's a learning thing too look I want to say that so that got turned down but I learned from that that I need to hold on a little bit with things and perhaps not send them out too early. So you, you were saying you know obviously with time constraints and, and working from home and, and homeschooling and um, how do you manage your time and, and when is there a certain time of the day that you feel um, more um, compelled to write or does it just depend on when the idea comes in and, and you feel oh I've got to write that down always the last the last thing you said but um usually I have the house to myself and it's in the day but I wonder if I I think I would write probably more in the evening but like my little girl's room's right next door my son's there and this the, the house creaks if I'm tapping away what are you doing you know so for me night writing doesn't happen anymore um so um, yeah, I think it, I'm, I'm really disorganized. I wish I was, perhaps it's because I get too carried away with enjoying and emotion. And um, so, but when I have a commission, I'm really super on it. I'm really organized and I know exactly what I'm doing and when, because usually you have to, I just recently did one with a dancer, um, Joe Chaplin, and I had to turn in, you know, specific amount of poetry in a specific amount of time. Nailed that. Well, I just wish I could do that for my own work. But everybody, I'm sure, has that has that issue. And I think perhaps it's a balance as well, isn't it? You know, you say when you've got the commissions, it focuses you. But then perhaps it's nice in a way to kind of be working on something and it's unfinished, but then you go back to it and you try again, and then you think, oh yeah, you know, a couple months later, I finished it and I really. Um, I'm really proud of that. So maybe the balance is, is a good a good balance. Do you think? Yeah, I, th I think you I think you're right there. I think that is true. I'm a bit hard on myself a lot, but uh, yeah. And you know, if it feels too forced, if if it felt like that, the commission stuff in my in my own personal practice, perhaps I wouldn't enjoy it so much. I, I like being a little bit loose and free and doing it when I want and on my terms. Yeah. So what are you working on at the moment? You mentioned a commission um, to do with like um, Cumdaran and that area. Yeah, um, and I've just, I, I've, um, I did have before lockdown um, a bursary to write about the creative process because when I was a poet in residence up in Abergavenny in a medieval house, I was so inspired by the craftspeople there. And I, I thought, wow, I can apply that to poetry. I can learn a little bit more about poetry through talking to a stonemason for instance and um so I, I was really enjoying it. I was talking to all sorts of people actually in the local area you know I, I went to see somebody make oak leaf wine and somebody who makes drums and um somebody who makes marmalade I was really enjoying that and then Covid came so I, I want to pick that back up soon um and also my poetry collection there's been years you know it's in a suitcase there an old suitcase um so I'm just, very gently putting that together very scared about putting that out um because I had one rejection for a few of the poems um and you get a few accepted here so it, it's it's really scary it's a really scary thing but you've got to, got to do it <laughs> so do you think the kind of fear gets any easier or like as you become um more experienced does that kind of oh you know is it going to become accepted does that become um does the fear become less or is it still just as scary to think oh my goodness me is it going to be accepted or are people yeah. going to like it it's weird because when I was not as good of a poet when I was younger I was a lot more courageous and I was just like sending stuff out right here and everywhere I'm a little bit more um kind of um restrained about that now but no it does it's not easy it's never easy when you get the letter saying oh we've read your poem and you know but you you get enough um acceptances that they mean something and like the other day put something on Facebook instead and it, it connected with people and I think well that's 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 why I'm writing it's not just to say I've been published in wherever um it's to connect with people and it's for myself and so I'm trying to shift actually my relationship with that 
um, because it is it's scary putting your stuff out there. You know? Would you yeah. any do you have any advice for somebody who is um, at the beginning of um, their career and would really love to pursue a career in writing mm-hmm. and become a poet? What would you say to them? Enjoy, enjoy, follow your wonder, enjoy what you're doing, because publication will come, there will be a place for your work. Oh, listen, I should be saying this to myself, right? (laughs) And there will be a place for your work, find that. So you do that by, you know, subscribing to journals or finding online journals, get in a writing workshop with people you trust. I mean, I know, for instance, Gartholo, you know, the Canal Van, you do creative writing workshops. So perhaps join that and um, just keep reading because, I, you know, I read all the time I'm reading poetry because those are your colleagues in a way. That's the language that you're trying to to add to. And so, yeah, and publication isn't everything. I mean, when I wasn't published, that's all I wanted. And at the moment, it's like, no, I want it to be in where I want it to be. So um, you've gone from read- Google in a way, you've sort of, you know, you, you've been published, but you're kind of looking at the other aspect of it that actually, like you say, the enjoyment, the love, the, the want mm-hmm. to do it, the emotion. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, it's, it's been really, really interesting to, to talk to you today, Claire. And um, I, I'm really glad that you joined us um, so that we could get to know you a little bit more. And, um, and hopefully, you know, if we can, um, our literature festival is all online this year. Um, and there are courses for adults. Um, that they can sign up to so um yeah so hopefully you know in the future and um, because you've run fantastic workshops for us in the past so we'd love to have you back so thank you very much Claire. Yeah, well. thank you thank you for your time thank you